It's finished. Altrincham 2, Dagenham and Redbridge uh, 1 and Altrincham <coughs> manager Phil Parkinson joins us. Phil, that has the feel of a huge victory. Yeah, I think it was really important we got that tonight. Everybody was frustrated after the last couple of games. I think the big question mark over us, uh, the opening part of the season, is game management and being able to see games through. Um, the players are learning every, every game, every week, and we're playing an opponent who scored... I think it's 11 goals in three games undefeated in 3-1-3 on the bounce. Beatgate said 7-1, um, which is no mean feat. So we couldn't have asked for a, a taller order, a tougher task. And the players were superb tonight and got just the rewards uh, with that impressive win. <clears throat> Fantastic uh, start. Inside 30 seconds, Regan Linney has uh, scored. And it was Justin Amaluzor who, uh, who, who got us going inside those first few, few seconds. Yeah, it shows the benefit of uh, playing forward early, uh, but with quality. And then Justin's basically whipped the ball into the box. It's not something we really uh, do, but he's got an early ball into the box. It's causing problems. And Regan's, I think it's Regan, isn't it, who's hit the ball, took a deflection, I think, um, and gone in, which you need a little bit of luck, which hasn't always been going for us. So we'll take that all day, but it was a really positive start. <clears throat> Dagenham responded uh, well and they had a lot of the ball and they moved the ball around very, very quickly. It was a fast tempo uh, game, but they didn't really cause us too many problems. No, because we set up a particular way. We, we looked at the Hartlepool game where they scored their goal, where they commit a lot of players forward. So fullbacks and, and wingers very high, pinning, pinning your wingers back if they're doing it correctly, which allows their centre-halves to come out with the ball but we were defensively solid. The wingers were ever so disciplined tonight. I know Carell in particular will be a little bit frustrated because he probably did a lot of defensive work and didn't get much of the ball offensively, whereas Justin probably got more of the ball. But they were really disciplined and that's what allowed us to get that platform in the game. And it ended up being where we were more of the counter-attacking team where we'd like to have more of the ball. We want to dominate the ball as much as we can at home, but what we'll do, we'll adapt to the situation. And I thought we counted brilliantly in the first half. What did you make of the penalty decision? Um, Ethan's took him, hasn't he? I mean, it's Uma has waited for him as well, so very clever from him. Um, and when Ethan comes out like that, he's, he's got to come out as well, because I think if he takes it early, he beats him. Um, so Ethan's come out and he's touched his man and it's, it looks like a penalty to me. Maybe you've got a different uh, perspective of it from your position up there. But that's how it looked to me. No, I think um, <coughs> I think it probably was a penalty, but it, it wasn't that clear cut. Um, in terms of the second half, we were at Dagenham and Redbridge right from the word go, and the second half we totally dominated. Yeah, well, I think we've been really good uh, coming out at half time. The information's being taken on. Um, obviously, myself and Neil relaying what we'd like to see from the players and they've been delivering on it pretty much at the after every interval so it's really good to see that good game management again from the players on the pitch because that's the important side of it then being able to manage situations and understand what to do myself and Sorves have been here a long long time and we we know how to win games and we set players up to do that and they've got to follow through and and today we were the players were able to get it over the line and the winning uh, goal, um, first goal for Tom Crawford. So that's a, a bit of a millstone off his uh, neck. He'll be pleased, but it was a really nice uh, finish. Got to say, from uh, from the gantry, it looked as if he was very close to being offside. I believe so, but we've had a look at it ourselves, and we, we don't think it is. So I'm not really bothered now, but um, it's a great finish from Tom. That's, that's what we brought him here to do, not be uh, a prolific scorer, but someone who gets in the 18-yard box. He was top of the charts last season at Hartlepool for doing that. He didn't always get the service. If we can get him in the box, he's got the technique, he's got the timing uh, to get more goals, and we're hoping he will now he's off the mark. And just before the uh, winning goal, uh, there was a well-worked uh, corner routine and um, not all, Joe Nuttall has just, just come on, he's caught it ever so well, it's just cleared the bar. Yeah, he's, 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 he's caught it brilliantly and you think what an impact from your substitute there and I thought he was superb when he came on because as we said we didn't have all the possession today and we had to go a little bit more direct and I felt he'd give us more of a presence and a platform. It did feel like a counter-attacking game, so I could have easily gone with Jake Bickerstaff, but I just felt we needed that physical presence, and I was very aware how we got stung by these last season when they, they scored right at the death with a set-piece, and they've got the long throw with Ling, so we wanted to have that bigger body on who could give us that presence, and Joe's a goal scorer, and he's really unlucky there. Another day that goes in. 
In terms of the overall approach to the game, it, I'm, I'm sure you and Neil uh, wound, wound the players up, but they seem to wind themselves up tonight after the disappointment of Saturday. Yeah, we're all frustrated, we're all disappointed. Um, and I can feel it around the football club. I've been saying it on pretty much every post-match. I don't know if people actually listen to them or not. I know people uh, have big opinions here, as they do at every football club. We've been here an ever, ever so long time now. If people don't trust us now, they'll never trust us. We know what we're doing. I keep reassuring people that the lads were either good enough, more than good enough for this level. And when we click, we'll get there. I said at the start, very start with you, and I said in my last interview that we'll have a little bit of hurt at the start, but look, we're getting Ollie Crankshaw back on the pitch now as well. What a big player he should be for us. Isaac Marriott, Lewis Bain should be back in a couple of weeks. That will give us natural balance with Lewis, Lewis coming back into the team. And then in these tight games, we've got to show that resilience, that know-how and learn game on game from past mistakes of how to get over the line because everybody's a, a, an armchair manager when they're, when they're in the stands and when they're at home on the stream. But we've got to make decisions out here on the pitch that affect games with substitutions, with instructions, but it doesn't matter what we say, it's what the players are able to do on the pitch and we've got good players here and, and and we knew it was a matter of time, so they started getting it right. And what we need to do now is take a bit of momentum, because that's the bit that's been missing. Momentum from victory, so we need to back it up again. We need another win, and then we go from there. But if you look at, um, again, contrasting season on season, the start, so the first 10 games, again, everyone feels a bit down about this season compared to last because of making the players. We're exactly the same points tally as what we were at that point last season. So we're in a really healthy position. I keep saying this is a strong squad. We need to stay injury free and we'll be absolutely fine. People have just got to keep believing, keep being real about what expectations they have of this football club and where we are right now because we're in a great spot. And as soon as people start feeling down about it, it goes nowhere. We've got to be positive at all times. It's Altrincham Football Club. We have to punch above our weight. We have to fight for everything. We have no God-given right to be in the position in the playoffs in this division. It was the first time for God knows how many years we did it last season. Just have a bit of perspective about where we're up to and how well this team and this football club are doing in this division. And two seasons ago, after a 4-1 defeat at Dagenham and Redbridge, we went bottom of the table after nine or uh, ten games. So again, you can see the tremendous progress for the club over two years that word's key progress um, and you can see it on the pitch there was times when we played Dagenham and Redbridge and we wouldn't be able to compete with them we might win we might pinch a victory but and we'd have spells of possession because we'd, we'd play our way but they were always superior to us because of the personnel they've got we bridged the gap massively but from last season to this everyone else has caught us up as well so how far ahead we were if you look at what we were doing last season, we, we brought in Chris Con clark for a fee that we'd obviously made from selling players, Justin Amaluza from selling players, Ethan Ross, Ollie Crankshaw. We haven't done that this time because we can't keep doing that. We're Altrincham, we're not a Chesterfield or Notts County. So again, we've got a real good, good team here, a strong team. And we've just got to realise where we're up to and have that bit of perspective when we, when we suffer a draw, when we feel a draw is a hardship. So... Really, really difficult to listen to, to some things that are out there, and I do listen to it. I don't, it gets fed back to me, so I just want to make sure everybody's crystal clear that I'm really happy where we're at as a team at the moment, and, and I really believe that we will kick on and we will push on, but you need to be patient with us as well. It's not always playing sailing. Football's never like that. It's not a fairy tale. It's a, it's a windy road with lots of bumps in, and uh, we've hit a few of them during the start of the season that people wouldn't have expected, but... We're absolutely fine and we'll go from strength to strength with wins like that. And it looks as if we've possibly got the strongest squad we've ever had. When you look at the seven substitutes that we've been able to put out every game this season, it's been a strong bench every time. And there's been times in the National League when we've struggled to put out a strong bench of five. It is hard. It's very hard. And... We're a club who like to develop players, so although our bench is strong, and it is when you look at Ollie coming off it, we've got a lot of developmental players. I look at George Wilson coming on the pitch. Obviously, we've got Liam Humbles on the bench. They'll be disappointed he's not come on a lone player, but he was he was coming for a purpose, and he's, he served it, and we will use Liam. But we've got a lot of players who, who we're trying to improve as well and bring along, but we need that quality. You're only as strong as, you, as the players you've got on your bench, and we've got a really strong bench at the moment. So it's uh, Tamworth uh, now, and that's a pretty uh, unique proposition in terms of the season. They're a little bit different from most of the teams in, in this league. They are, they are. Um, 
they're a really direct team uh, obviously the surface is in their favor as well they're used to playing on it so it's it's a difficult place to go um i'll have a really good look at them uh, moving forward but obviously with the opposition that we've had we've had, we've had a little bit of a look at them obviously ba braintree the other day um and they're going to be a really awkward opponent for us but i don't want to get into it too much because i want to enjoy that win and then focus on tamworth tomorrow and, and really get into what we need to do to beat them it'll be uh, your first visit to Tamworth as the Altrincham manager, although you have been there once before, watching the team just after you'd been appointed in the final game of the season in that appalling 26-17 uh, 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 season, so uh, you know all about uh, what we're likely uh, to face, but uh, there's a lot happened in those seven, and seven years plus. Yeah, I think so. I think it's been uh, nothing but great. I've, I've loved every, every minute of being here. I get frustrated at times, as I'm sure people can tell from the interview, because I just want people to have a perspective and we've got a lot of new fans and maybe they forgot where we've come from and I'm sure the older fans are educating them on that but we've come a long way and we're, we're only going one way, we're going up. It doesn't all happen straight away. Football, as I said, isn't a straight road. Everybody's pulling in the same direction here, the board, the players, the staff, you guys. Um, that's how it's got to be and that's why I've always wanted to be here and, and I will as long as I feel that there's that progression and that ambition from the club and that there is, it's unequivocally there and as I said I only feel like we're going in one direction and we've just got to keep pulling and pushing together, stick together, don't turn on us when we get a draw or when it gets a little bit tough because it will, there'll be a lot more downs in this division, it's always that way but there'll be some fantastic highs as well so stick with us and you'll enjoy them highs even more. Well, uh, congratulations. It's your birthday uh, today, so I'm sure you're going to uh, enjoy uh, the rest of uh, the evening, but no better present than three points in the National League. No, and our fans were brilliant there. I really appreciate that at the end. It's a, a nice gesture from them. And we have a great rapport with our fans, a great connection. So my disappointment, a, a minority few, but they're the loud ones. They're the ones, unfortunately, the players are, the staff here. Um, but listen, we, we really appreciate our fantastic support, home and away. There's no better feeling than being under the lights here and getting a win and sharing it with them. So thank you.